This excited state is sometimes viewed as an uh, extreme. Uh, that is a, a particle picture of an excited state, and that is defined as the bound electron hole pair, uh, which is schematically shown in these diagrams. Probably you must be fam familiar with this kind of diagrams. This is the valence band and the conduction band in inorganic semiconductors. And the electron hole pair, bound electron hole pair, uh, has a smaller energy difference between these electron and the holes, uh, free electron and the free holes because of the binding energies. So the energy difference between this and this one, addition of this uh, energy difference corresponds to the binding energy. Uh, the, usually, this energy binding energy is small in inorganic semiconductors because of the large dielectric constant, as I explained before. So that the energy binding is small, and this uh, distance is also, because of this uh, small binding energy, this distance, uh, radius of this uh, the exton is large. So these are the atoms, and uh, that actually covers the uh, several atoms, few atoms uh, from the whole core nucleus here, yeah, atoms. So this is called the uh, uh, large exton or the Wernier exton. However, uh, in the molecular solid, uh, as I mentioned, the dielectric constant is large, so that binding energy is bigger. As you can see here, the binding energy is about 10 times uh, or 100 times larger than the, uh, this uh, inorganic counterpart, and the radius is small. So usually extons are locate, localized on single molecules. So this is called the Frankel exton, and that usually in the molecular semiconductors, we draw uh, that on the, this band diagram uh, using arrows instead of these uh, uh, particle-like pictures here. These uh, arrows indicate the spin state of that. So the, the one state, quantum state, can the occup, uh, actually the, can accommodate two electrons with different spins that indicate by this way. And uh, this is the, the electrons in lumor level or lumor band, or the holes in the homo band with uh, spin state up and down here. Well, sometimes even in molecules, uh, the extrons can ex exist in uh, in over two molecules, the, that's called charge transfer exton here, and uh, the electron is located in one molecule and the hole is located in the neighbor molecules. If they are the same molecules, we call the excimer, and if they are different, they are called explex. Anyway, there's uh, uh, the charge transfer extons, which is important, uh, plays important role in organic semiconductor devices because single and triple energy gap is small uh, in these uh, charge transactions. The one more the interesting point in organic semiconductors is the consideration of electron spin state of extons, so-called singlet and the triplets. If extons are formed by coming electron and holes, uh, the, those uh, the particles have spins. So there are two choices, up and down, this one up, up or down here. If they have this two up and down, this also have up and down. So if you make a combination, you can say this up, up, down, down, and up, down, by this way, this way, this way. So you know, there are four possible spin states by the way. Among them, these last two spin states are not symmetric or anti-symmetric. In quantum mechanical point of view, that must be either symmetric or anti-symmetric, uh, so that when uh, electrons are exchanged. And for the, therefore, we need a linear combination has to be made the, by this way. So if you just uh, make a linear combination of this one, 
one is the plus and the other one is minus. If you just exchange electrons, uh, you can see that the changes in sign. This uh, does not change sign, but this changes sign to minus. So this is asymmetric. And this one, this uh, three state, actually the symmetry upon exchange of electrons. So the, we call this is triplet state because there are three symmetric states and this is a single state. And this is uh, anti-symmetric, this is uh, symmetric. It, the, this is uh, schematically shown for the spin state of, uh, of these electrons and hole here. So this, uh, you can see the differences. Uh, this is symmetric, those are, and this is asymmetric here. Then you may ask, why do we care about uh, a single and triplets? That is uh, that plays important role, important difference when we consider emission process. If you just uh, think of the emission from this uh, singlet, where the asymmetric case, then you can see that this, uh, this is up and this is down. And uh, when you transit the, from the excited state uh, to this ground state, then the selection rule indicates that the spin state must be conserved. So it, it, the, the, the even with the trans from uh, this S1 state to S0 state, that should be uh, the, the, even in the after transfer from this S1 state to this ground state, that must be kept uh, this way. So this is up and this down after, after the decay process. So that's allowed here, right? So because this is up, another electron is down. So that actually holds for the Hunt's rule. But uh, for, so this is allowed and then process is rather fast. Uh, in nanosecond range. So symmetry is conserved. However, if you just think about this triplet state where the, they are symmetric, the, if you just uh, transit from excited state to here uh, decay, then that is not possible because uh, in the ground state uh, you, can, you cannot have this kind of uh, the same electro electrons with the same spin state, right? So there's a spin flipping is required for the transition from this excited state to the ground state. So the, this transition is not permitted, triplet to ground state. Uh, the, there are some exceptional cases where the heavy atoms uh, are there or other, other processes where the, this uh, spin flipping is processes. So the, this transition uh, is, requires uh, this kind of uh, uh, the spin flipping so that the process is, is uh, slow, uh, like one second compared to this the nanosecond, you can see here. So the, uh, uh, this, uh, this actually gives a tremendous uh, differences uh, between this uh, the singlet state and triplet state for the light emission processes. The, gener the actually generation of the different method of uh, generation of excitons gives a different ratio of a singlet and triplet rate with the uh, triplets. For photo generations, uh, the symmetry of molecules does, uh, do not uh, change because uh, the spin state is, must be conserved during the transition. So that the, all the singlets are formed. In contrast, for electrical generations, electron holes recombine to form excitons. So their sp spins are uncorrelated, as I explained uh, in, the, in the previous slide here. So that the single and the triplets are formed and the, the ratio between single and the triplets is one to four statistically. So single that comprise 25% of excitons if the excitons are formed by electrical excitations. So this will be discussed a little bit later that the, uh, the, that actually gives a significant difference in the emission uh, the, the, from the eff efficiency 
uh, the, depending on the these fluorescent molecules or phosphorescent molecules in OLEDs. One more process we have to consider in organic semiconductors uh, that is called energy transfer. Uh, the, let's consider uh, the, this case. Uh, there are two different molecules. Uh, one is the donor and the other one is acceptor. If donor is excited, in the neighborhood there is a molecule A, and if conditions or proper conditions is satisfied, then the energy of uh, this donor excited state is transferred to acceptor, uh, resulting in the ground state donor and the uh, uh, excited uh, acceptor state. This is, uh, this is called energy transfer process. Let's, the, as an example, let's consider this uh, iridium PPI3 doped in PVK films that was uh, fabricated in, by spin coating. The doping concentration uh, changed from 0.5 to 88 percent, as, as shown here. The absorption spectrum of OP here is working as the acceptor here. It's shown by this uh, black line here. And the emission spectra or PBK and OP are shown as the red and the blue colors in this figure. You see that uh, this uh, emission spectrum of uh, PBK each place as donor and the absorption spectrum of acceptor overlap each other. Therefore, uh, if this kind of condition is satisfied, uh, the, uh, even with the absorption, the excitation of PVK, emission is observed. The emission takes place in RP molecules, as shown here. Uh, the 0.5 doping concentrations it shows the emission from both PBK and uh, iridium RP case here. However, even with just 2-8% of doping of RP in PBK, excited energy excitons of uh, PBK is completely transferred to RP, and uh, you just observe uh, uh, emission from only from the RP case. So it, this uh, process is called emission process or uh, energy transfer expressed by this equation here, red equation. There are two different mechanisms, first uh, energy transfer, uh, resonant energy transfer, in short, people call FRET, and uh, dextra energy transfer. First uh, energy transfer use is through resonant dipole coupling, and uh, here the schematically that is shown here, so donor, excited donor experiences transition from the, the excited state to the ground state, but the, with the, uh, getting the transferred energy from these donor molecules, except the molecules getting the uh, energy from these uh, donor molecules, uh, these uh, except molecules excited, uh, resulting in this ground state donor and the excited state acceptors. So this is dipole-dipole coupling. So this is dipole transition. This is dipole transition again. So this is the, called the dipole-dipole coupling. Transition between different spin states of donor and acceptors are allowed. So singular, 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 triplet, triplet, triplet is possible because uh, transition itself is just within a molecule itself. And uh, this dipole-dipole coupling is uh, in long range. So long-range energy transfer is possible. Sometimes uh, 100 angstrom, actually the, with the radius is also possible there. The equation, the energy transfer rate expressed by this equation here, one of us tau d and r times r sub zero over r to the six here. r is the distance between this acceptor and donor molecules. Uh, here, this is r sub zero is called uh, Foster radius, uh, the, which is proportional to the spectrum overlap between a donor and the acceptor, uh, as shown here. Also, the dipole is a vector, so vector component, uh, uh, the overlap factors, dipole overlap factors, so on. 
Uh, in contrast to, to the first energy transfer, next energy transfer is uh, through electron exchange mechanisms, as uh, I explained uh, schematically in these diagrams. And uh, this uh, donor, the electron in the excited donor state, uh, move to the acceptor uh, molecules, and the uh, uh, electron in the ground state move to donor, uh, resulting in the ground state donor and the excited acceptor molecules. So these uh, exchange electrons exchange between here, so that the, the electron, the both molecular wave functions must overlap uh, for the process energy transfer uh, to take place. So the the, the also energetically, uh, same conditions must be satisfied, but the uh, rates are different. In this case, we don't have any transition in this, the, for this donor or acceptor, just exchange. So we need just the energy condition. This is just energy condition because so that we use just a normalized emission or absorption spectra without considering the uh, decay rate or absorption transition efficiencies on both cases. Also, spectrum overlap requires uh, as, uh, this kind of uh, exponential functions. Usually, this requires the uh, wave function overlap, so the, uh, the short-range energy transfer is possible only uh, in the energy transfer. Now, now this, uh, uh, we need to consider some kinetics of the excited state. Uh, we we uh, just consider the absorption and the emission spectra, but uh, we need to consider uh, how fast and what's happening after uh, the molecules are excited. Uh, here, we just uh, consider just uh, optical excitations. So optical excitation is uh, represented by this uh, blue arrow here yeah, from the ground state, uh, by vibronical ground state and vibronical electric state to the vibronically excited uh, and first excited, electronically excited state among them. And uh, this, is the, the, this molecule reaches to this point, and then they experience internal conversion to the vibronically ground state of the electronic excited state. Or uh, during that transition, the, they actually change the system from singlet to triplet, they called inter-system crossing. And uh, the, this S1 state, uh, vibronic ground state of the electric S1 state also decay uh, to the ground state via two, two paths. One is the, uh, the biothermal energy or the by emitting light. Uh, this is internal conversion. This is the radiative decay. Or that actually can have uh, experienced energy transfer uh, to the neighboring, neighbor molecules. So the, there are the four decay paths path here, one is the inter-system crossing and uh, the internal conversion, uh, fluorescent uh, decay, and energy transfer. The, the rate of uh, this decay process can be simply expressed by this equation, fluorescent, inter-system crossing, internal conversion, and energy transfer. So that the equation is just first, first of the reaction, so that we can easily uh, set up the equation, kinetic equation, and solve uh, easily to get uh, this kind of exponential decay with uh, exponential t over tau t is the time, and tau sub zero is explained by here. This is uh, called the lifetime. This is one of uh, uh, this uh, all the addition of these processes here. And uh, among uh, out of four processes, only the radiative uh, rate gives the light emission, so that the PLQI is simply expressed by this equation. So the, if we just schematically draw this uh, fate of electric processes, we can have this one. And the time constant for this process is uh, uh, schematically shown here. Internal intersystem crossing is about 10 picosecond, very fast, and the fluorescence is 1 to 10 nanosecond, and this phosphorescence is uh, uh, usually longer then 100 uh, nanoseconds sometimes uh, reaches a second or minutes sometimes some. Also, the, there are two particular uh, processes called biomolecular processes, and the quenching triplet-triplet actually 
colliding of that annihilation, and that gives a delayed fluorescence and the singlet, singlet external fusion, singlet triplet external reaction, or a singlet polaron, actually the interactions to, by that way. Okay, so this is the end of the optical properties. Thank you for attention. And the lecture will be continued for the second one by discussing the electrical properties. Thank you for your kind attention.